The life cycle of the Atlantic salmon begins in late autumn. High in mountain streams, the female creates a nest for her eggs by digging holes in the gravel. The nests are called reds. Reds are situated in clean flowing sections of streams, which provide a plentiful supply of oxygen to allow the eggs to develop. As the eggs are deposited in the red, the male fertilizes them with milk. The female can lay thousands of eggs, although not all of these will survive to hatch. As eggs develop over the winter, the eyes begin to form and appear as black dots through the egg membrane. As early spring approaches, the eggs begin to hatch. These newly hatched salmon are known as alvins. They feed from their attached yolk sac while staying hidden from view in the red. After about six to eight weeks, the alvins emerge from the gravel. They are now able to swim and prevent themselves from being carried away by the stream current. After emerging from the gravel, the young salmon are known as fry. At about two centimeters in length, they emerge from the gravel and rise towards the water surface. They then take a gulp of air in order to fill their swim bladder, which allows them to maintain their position in the water. The fry feed on microscopic life in the stream, which allows them to grow rapidly during their first year. After this year, the fry become known as par. Par can be distinguished by the changes in their marking appearance. They develop dark vertical markings. These markings provide camouflage to protect the par from predators. At this stage, they survive by eating small aquatic insects. Par will stay in rivers from anywhere between one and five years, depending on the food availability and water conditions. Eventually, the par begin to undertake a series of changes. The par markings begin to be replaced by a silver sheen while their fins begin to darken. This process, known as smolting, prepares them for their life in the ocean. They begin to adapt to survive in salt water by osmoregulating. This means the salmon learns to regulate the salt levels in the body effectively. In spring, the smolts travel downriver to the ocean and leave in shoals. Their home section of the river becomes imprinted on the salmon, which allows them to return with a remarkable degree of accuracy. Upon leaving their river, Atlantic salmon make the long journey to their feeding grounds in the Arctic. Some Scottish salmon migrate to waters off the coast of Greenland and feed on smaller fish and crustaceans, whilst others head to the North Norwegian Sea. A major threat to the salmon's life cycle occurs here as Earth's climate changes. This rise in temperature is having detrimental effects on marine food chains in these waters. Salmon can remain at sea for one to four years, although hormones dictate when the salmon is ready to return to its spawning river. The salmon's journey home is fraught with dangers and threats from predators such as dolphins. Another danger to the salmon is the use of illegal coastal fishing nets. Reducing the number of spawning females that return home can have a huge impact on future salmon populations. Salmon arrive at their freshwater rivers between February and November and continue the long distance back to their spawning grounds. Salmon may face obstacles such as waterfalls on their way. Amazingly, they are able to loop up these, although it may take several attempts to do so. Once in freshwater, returning salmon do not feed but survive off the fat reserves they built up while at sea. The female now swollen with eggs, returns to the spawning ground accompanied by a male in order to complete the life cycle. In a healthy life cycle, the same number of salmon manage to return to the river as was originally spawned, ensuring that the population numbers stay relatively even. If an event occurs that dramatically reduces the number of salmon at some point within this cycle, it can have devastating effects on future populations and can take many years for the ecosystem to fully recover. For example, if through poor agricultural management, waste and sediment build up in a stream, the number of alvins, fry and par could be severely reduced. This therefore means 
that only a fraction of the salmon that are hatched are able to make it to full spawning maturity. These bottlenecks can occur at any stage of the salmon's life cycle. Climate change is already taking its toll on salmon populations at sea and could have devastating consequences if the sea temperatures continue to rise.